success, this ability has a massive impact on my life. I'm a carer for my wife, who suffers with a chronic illness. As a carer, I'm responsible for most of her basic needs. It's a full-time job, and um, I have to be on hand 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. Like hundreds of thousands of other carers in the, in the country, I struggle with mental illness. My depression was not caused by my role as a carer. However, because caring is such a stressful and time-consuming role, it does make dealing with depression extremely difficult. Sometimes it feels impossible. When I first started struggling with depression, I felt like I wasn't allowed to be sick. I felt that I didn't have the right to it. I was the carer after all. I wasn't the one who was living with the chronic illness. I know that some of you listening might feel the same. Uh, you might feel that there's been nothing in your life to justify mental illness. You might have a great life and feel um, like you've got nothing to be depressed about. Let me tell you that mental illness doesn't need a reason to affect your life. In the same way as you don't have to smoke to get lung cancer. It was a long time before I accepted that I had an issue that I needed to deal with, rather than one I could ignore. I realised, as I hope you all do, that it's okay to feel anxious sometimes. It's okay to feel depressed. It's okay to be afraid. Whatever your situation, don't be ashamed or let the problem fester like I did. Take that step, ask for help and begin to deal with it. Facing mental illness head on doesn't make you weak, it makes you stronger. No matter who you are, we all need help from time to time. There's nothing wrong with that. We're all human. None of us are above needing support. I found that it took a lot more courage to admit that I needed help than to bury my head in the sand and decide to go it alone. I was once obsessed with the idea that I had to manage everything by myself, that I couldn't seek or accept help. I thought that needing help meant that I'd failed myself and my wife. I stubbornly stuck to this false notion until I was consumed by feelings of failure and self-loathing. Eventually, I ended up in hospital. It almost destroyed me. For some people, mental illness is a lifelong battle. Over the past three years, I've worked hard to overcome depression. I've equipped myself with weapons and a faith that helps me fight it. But this doesn't mean that it isn't there anymore. Even though I know I haven't failed, when I need support. Sometimes I still feel like a failure. Other times I still feel desperately lonely and have to resist urges to hurt myself. It can be disheartening and frustrating when you feel like you've taken a step backwards but it's all part of the process. It's normal. Thinking that you should be completely better will just put unwanted and unhelpful pressure on you. When I do slip back into bad ways of thinking and feel depression taking ground, I find it useful to remember what I've achieved. I make a point to um, find achievements in all areas of my life um, and write them down in a book so that I never forget them. Some of these are big achievements, others are small but no less significant. For example, this week I spoke to someone I didn't know in a lecture when all I wanted to do was sit alone and wallow in, 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 um, in negativity. This might sound insignificant to you, but it was an important step in me taking back ground against mental illness. I wrote this down so that next time I, next time I feel like a failure or shrouded in darkness, I can look back and be encouraged by the small steps I've taken. I also make a point to find achievements in negative situations. This year is actually my fifth year as an undergraduate. I've had to reset two, of, two years of my degree. This is partly because of mental and physical Ill illness, and partly because of the pressures of being a carer. I was very disappointed when I was forced to accept that I couldn't finish this year. 
it was a very hard pill to swallow. I was ashamed, and it, it's actually still difficult for me to talk about it today. But I can now see my achievement in this situation. I can see that after all the struggles and all the setbacks, I'm still here fighting and unwilling to give up on what's important to me. I'm much better equipped to deal with my mental health now than ever before. However, the temptation to hide away and give in to the darkness is still there. It's still strong and at times overwhelming, but I refuse to submit myself to it. I don't want a life that's controlled by depression. I don't want that for my wife, I don't want that for myself, and I don't want that for my future family. I know that I've been called for more than that. That's why I continue to fight. I'll continue to speak out and make my voice heard. I'll continue, continue challenging misconceptions and stigma.